Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back checking out what Chris and I are up to. So in today's video, this is one of those cases of the right time, the right place to get that find. So in today's video, me and Chris are tag teaming a bedroom set, a dresser and a nightstand. Real wood, yes. <laughs> so stay tuned for the process of how we make these pieces over to get them to resell in our retail booth. Okay, so I might have been stalking my local Goodwill. They were bringing these pieces in. A couple was donating these pieces, and they know that I purchase furniture, so they were so kind to offer it while I was in the store. Oh my goodness, what an amazing uh, right time, right place kind of thing. So the only thing that we want to change up on these pieces is this medallion shell-like. Now we had a china hutch that had the same feature on it and I don't know if that was what made it sit longer than we would have liked it to. So we're going to go ahead and fill this in. So I'm going to use some Bondo to fill this in. So a little bit of Bondo, okay, a guesstimate of how much Bondo, whatever sticks to my putty knife, and a little bit of hardener, and get a mixing it, and then I'm going to start applying because as soon as you start that hardener and mixing that in, it starts to harden. <music> So as Chris is taking the hardware off, there was this extra piece laying in the drawer, but the hardware is broken, so we don't have a complete set. So luckily we do hoard, stash a little bit of hardware, so we'll see what I can come up with for that many drawers. So with the nightstand, I needed 11 handles and 11 poles so these were the only two sets that I had in our stash that I had that many of so now we just have to narrow it down to which that we like and I like these ones that lay a little bit flatter it would seem to reason that we just fill it with the leftover bondo but that's how hard, fast hit hardens nope we're not able to use that it was hardening way too fast so i had to mix up some durham water putty to fill in the rest of these hardware holes because of course the hardware doesn't match up so now it is time to sand and he started off with that bondo because that hardened first within about 30 minutes it is ready to harden and then he has to come back and sand the durham water putty a couple hours later because that takes a lot longer to set up <music> We were lucky enough that this is a real wood piece. So there's a couple ways you could get that top coat off and get it down to the natural wood. Yeah, you could do a stripper on it, but eh, you know, that this those strippers are really messy and we still, still Michigan here and it was still cold at the time. So sanding it is that he could hook it up to the vacuum system. So yes, he's going to sand all that top coat, all that stain off and get it down to the natural wood to get around the outside where that has that little detail on there he's going to change our sander out you can purchase a separate little cushion head that will help you sand that detail without removing those sharp edges and he is going to go back and hand sand that little bitty crevice that has a little bit of that top coat and stain left behind it's never any easy task, whether you're stripping it off, whether you're sanding that top cough. It just takes elbow grease and takes time. So 
so now we're going to be sp he's going to be spraying the drawers and the body of this dresser and nightstand so he's going through and taping off all the areas that he doesn't want to the spray to go so just some masking tape the two inch masking tape a roll of plastic that i thrifted forever ago and i love this thing it was the best six dollars and nine cents i've ever spent because i swear that roll isn't going anywhere it just keeps staying the same size I was going to go ahead and get the piece all cleaned up. Just going to use some crud cutter. The deglosser one is what we had at our local store to buy this time. You just take what you have on the shelves, guys. So, yep. So, just getting it some hot water, getting this all cleaned up. Black Furniture has been selling really well for us especially if we can have some natural wood at the top. So it's still going to try to do what sells for us. It's nice to have furniture in your booth to look all pretty, but it's also nice to have it selling. So he's just using that black onyx ready to use paint right off the shelf from Walmart, our True Coat 360 handheld sprayer to spray this dresser and that matching nightstand. Even though this hardware is black, it has a shaded kind of a detail on it that we don't want to stand out. So we got them all washed up. They're all dry. Now spraying them with some Rust-Oleum paint and primer in the flat black. And then after that dries, we will seal them in with some polycrylic. How many of you all hold your breath going, oh gosh, I hope I taped this off well enough that none of that spray got underneath there. And I have to say, he did a really good job at taping it off. Spray paint will definitely always find its little lowest level if you have a little bit of a hole. Now the Bondo did really well, but the thing with real wood and black paint is you see all that beautiful grain, which we absolutely love. But since we know we filled it in, yeah, we're going to put this little applique on there. I think this was actually um, in a gift from the viewer, Kelly. So I'm getting to use it up. Um, I'd already glued it back together. It was a broken piece, but God wink moment that we had it on hand. It is a perfect fit. So as Chris was getting this unwrapped, I had to come over and spy because, yep, it did have some water spots that, yep, seeped all the way into the natural wood. So this hopefully is an easy fix. So, yep, just good old Clorox bleach is what I'm going to use to hopefully bleach those spots out. Now what I do is I just have it full strength. I just pour it in a bowl. I don't pour it on there. I don't want splash effect. So I just put it right on the spots themselves. Let that sit about 10 minutes. And then so that it doesn't have a bleach spot where it has gone to the rest of it, you end up having to bleach the entire thing, but let it sit on those main spots first. So now after letting this sit about 10 minutes, I go back in with a 300 grit sandpaper, just a little piece. And all I'm doing is making sure because water, anything wet will raise the grain of the wood. And I want to make sure that I've gotten it all the way into the little crevices of the beautiful wood. Now I'll go through and I'll bleach the entire spot. You can definitely tell as I'm bleaching, you can see the outer of the full strength bleach. That's why you really need to go back in and bleach the entire piece so it's nice and even. And then let it sit another 10, 5, 10 minutes and then start rinsing it off really well. To stain the top of this piece, I got some inspiration off a picture I ran across. I'm always looking up on pinterest um you know black furniture trying to get ideas of how they all put it together but it's pretty basic and i know that this is an oak so it's going to really 
be that reddish color and I really want to tone that down a notch. So I mixed antiquing wax and cocoa bean, which are a dark color. My top is still a little bit wet and I'm just going to, yep, I'm just going to rub it on this whole top and just get it all over here. Let it soak in, wipe off any of the excess, let that dry. And if it's not dark enough or it's not, there's still too much red showing, I can go back through and do a second coat. So our applique matches the wood that we stained it. We're going, I'm going to use that same mixture on this applique. Since so we'll be adding the applique to the piece, we decided that we were just going to change that drawer out with a handle, but now we need to go ahead and put knobs back on it. So I was trying to find knobs that we had in our stash that kind of had that same detail as these poles. After the first layer of stain had dried, I decided that I really wanted it to be darker and I wanted it to get a little bit more red out, so I'm going back in with a second coat. Now to glue this applique on, we're going in with the Starbond CA glue, and now we're using the black just in case. We don't want anything, any colored, any clear squirting out from underneath this, but this will definitely hold this piece. Get a little bit of glue and a couple little brad nails to hold it on. Now that we have this top stain the way we want it, the applique is on, now it's time to polycrylic the entire piece. Yep, just waited for that stain to be done so we could polycrylic it. So I'm just going in with the polycrylic and the clear mat with the spray can. the polycrylic is dry we're going to go back in and sand these details and now i'm just going to use the tip of the mouse sander in the right angles to sand all the way down to that natural wood and give this just a little bit of a distressed look And then Chris is going in and doing all the little delicate work of, I believe this is called dental work, and getting that just a little bit of that added detail to pop. And after we pop our details, we'll go back in with some fine grit steel wool and sand the entire piece. One, this is going to make it nice and smooth, and the other, it is going to open up this polycrylic so we can do some antiquing wax on it.
Now after three coats of polycrylic to make sure that these tops are good and protected, I'm going in with some fine grit steel wool, making sure that it's nice and smooth and wiping any of that excess sanding dust off. Now it's time to get this back together, but first Chris has to drill new holes for the hardware. And if you do a lot of furniture and you're doing a lot of new holes like we do, this Craig hardware jig is just the perfect tool. So you can match it up to the holes of what your hardware pieces are so that it always stays consistent, especially when it comes to lining up multiple drawers. Sure, there's those that think, oh, this applique should have gone the other direction, but the way that we needed to add the hardware, this is the direction that was best suited for this. today's video guys yes this was one of those cases we were at the right time at the right place kind of thing and what is the chances of that yes usually furniture at my local goodwill just sells so fast so to have a set a set um that is in beautiful shape and doesn't need a ton of work just a little bit of updating and is real wood thank you god so yes so thanks again for watching today's video guys and always give me a quick comment what did you think i know we keep doing the colors that sell but they're the colors that sell so why would you not i can't have furniture sitting in our booth that is just there to look pretty. Well, I want it to look pretty too, but I also want it to sell. So again, thanks for watching today's video, guys. And if you're new and you're checking out our content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye!